Hello everybody. So to start the class, who wants to volunteer to lead the prayer? Okay, please, Justin. Please lead the prayer. Okay, good morning, class. So let's check your attendance first. Miss Secretary, who's absent for the day? Okay, none. Okay, thank you. So yesterday we discussed about how DNA is being copied. So DNA makes multiple copies of itself. So what do you call the process by which DNA makes a copy of itself? Yes, Jin? Okay, correct. The DNA replication. So we also have talked about the sequence of codons in the DNA. So there is what we call nucleotides or bases. So what are those? Yes, Carl. Very good. Okay, so before we proceed to the next topic, so who can tell me how Cyclops from X-Men got his superpowers? Okay, was born with his superpowers already. Okay, so how about Hawk? Oh, he was exposed to gamma radiation. But how about Spider-Man? Okay, he was bitten by a radioactive spider. Okay, so we have identified superheroes who gained some sort of special abilities from mutations. So for Cyclops and any of the X-Men, the powers were caused by a pre-burst DNA or genome mutation or kumbaga nandiyan na siya. Inborn, kumbaga inborn na. So kay Hope naman tsaka kay Spider-Man, their powers happened a little differently since the mutations occurred later when they were exposed to um, radioactivity in some form or another. So today we will discuss some of the signs behind mutations. While the superpowers and disabilities we just discuss may be fictional, it is a true it is true that mutations can have a significant impacts on people and evidences exist that radiation exposure can lead to an an increased rate of mutation. So first we will discuss the different types of mutations when then where or how they can occur. And next, we will also talk about some environmental factors that can influence the rate of mutations and finish by looking at some possible effects of mutations. Let me present to you our goals for today, so or the learning objectives. So at the end of the lesson, the students should be able to list different types of mutations. Number two, describe some possible effects of mutations and also explain the role of mutations in genetic syndromes. Okay, so based on the superheroes that we talked about earlier, so what do you call them? Or what term yung lagi nyo naririnig kapag ka nanonood kayo ng X-Men? Yung mga ganun, ganun Mutant? Mutant? Yes. Correct. So based on that idea, what do you think is our topic for today? Yes, mutation. Well, let's start with the types of mutations. So mutations can be classified in several different ways. So in this lesson, we will focus on sorting mutations by their effects on the structure of DNA or a chromosome. So for this categorization, mutations can be organized into two main groups. So the two general categories are what we call the small scale and the large scale mutations. So when we say of small-scale mutations, these are those that affect the DNA at the molecular level by changing the normal sequence of nucleotide base pairs. Okay, so these types of mutations may occur during the process of the DNA replication during either the meiosis or the mitosis. So there are three um, possible types of small-scale mutations. We have the substitution, deletion, and insertion. Okay, so first we have the substitution. Substitution occurs when a nucleotide is replaced with a different nucleotide in the DNA sequence. So this is also referred to as a point mutation. So the most common substitution involved is the switching of adenine and guanine or A and G or, or C to T. Okay, so let's always remember that A is always paired with T and that C is always paired with G. So to compare, we have here the normal DNA sequence and with its um, protein translation, and the bottom is the 
substitution with its normal protein translation as well. So looking at the colored letter compared to the normal DNA sequence at the top, you will be able to know or to notice that there is a substitution mutation going on when there is a single nucleotide switching into another nucleotide base pair. That results that will result into um, different protein translation. Okay, so since the total number of nucleotides is conserved, so this type of mutation only affects the codon for a single amino acid. Okay, so next is the deletion. So a deletion is a removal of a nucleotide from the DNA sequence. So deletions are referred to as a frame shift or frame shift mutations because the removal, the removal of even a single nucleotide from a gene subsequently alters every codon after the mutations. So it is said to be um, reading frame is shifted. Okay, so we have here the normal DNA and the deletion. Okay, so let's move to the large scale category. So we have at least um, six mutations. We have the deletion, duplication, ins inversion, insertion, translocation, and non-disjunction. So to start with, we have the large scale deletion. So this is a single chromosome mutation involving the loss. So the term here is the loss of one or more genes from the parent chromosome. So as you can see at the picture, we have here the um, before the picture of before deletion and after deletion. So yeah. So next is the duplication. So duplication is a is the addition of an addition of one or more genes that are already present in the chromosome. So this is also a single chromosome mutation. Okay. Next is the inversion. So um, inversion is a mutation involves the complete reversal of one or more genes. So focus on the picture. Di ba makikita nyo? So within a chromosome, so the genes there are present, but the order is backwards from the parent chromosomes. So this is also a single chromosome mutation. So next is what we call the large scale um, insertion. So here it involves a multiple chromosomes or for this type of insertion, there is a one or more genes that are being removed from one chromosome and then being inserted naman into another non-homologous chromosome. So this can occur by an error during the prophase one of meiosis. So when the chromosomes are, be, are swapping genes to increase diversity. Okay, so lastly is the translocation and non-disjunction. So the large scale translocation mutation also involves multiple non-homologous chromosomes. So, dito, the chromosomes swap one or more genes with another chromosomes. And also, we have a large-scale non-disjunction mutation which does not involve any errors in DNA replication. Pero, um, instead, these mutations occur during the anaphase and telophase when the chromosomes are not separated correctly into the new cells. These are I mean, common non-disjunctions are missing or extra chromosomes. So like, for example, when gametes with non-disjunctions are produced during meiosis, it can result in offspring with monosomy or trisomy. Okay, so based on what I had mentioned, the small-scale and large-scale mutations, what do you think is the difference of the two? Yes, Jim? Correct. So since we all know already anything about large and small-scale mutations, we, all, we also have to know about its effect. So the effect of mutations, this may range from nothing to the inviability of a cell. So all mutations affect the proteins that are created during the protein synthesis, but hindi lahat ng mutations have a significant impact. So the effect can also be looked at differently between the small and large-scale mutations. So the effect of small-scale mutations is... Um, Tinatawag din natin itong frame shift, frame shift mutations, yung insertion at saka deletions sa genes. They both have similar effects. So when a nucleotide is added or being removed from the DNA sequence, the sequence is shifted and, and every codon after the mutation is being changed. So this results in severe alteration 
to the proteins that are encoded by the DNA. So that will lead to um, loss of functionality for those proteins. And also we have the effects of large-scale mutations. So these are more obvious than those of small-scale mutations because the duplication of multiple genes causes those genes to be overexpressed while deletions results in missing or incomplete genes. So mutations can change the order of the genes on the chromosome, such as the deletion, inversion, insertion, translocation. This results in close together genes that were previously separated, either by a set of genes on the same chromosomes or on another chromosome altogether. So when certain genes are positioned close together, they may encode for what we call a fusion protein, so which is a protein that would not normally exist but is created by a mutation in which two genes were combined. So some of these proteins give cells a growth advantage uh, um, that leads to tumors or worse, cancer. Okay, so next is what can influence mutations? So when we say mutations, these are naturally, this naturally occur over time, which is the underlying cause of evolution. So as we can see, evolution is very slow process with a net benefit to an organism, but some environmental factors may influence or induce additional mutations. So these um, induced mutations often lead to harmful diseases such as cancer. So exposure to certain chemicals is one environmental factor that may induce DNA mutations. So typically, anything that we identify as a carcinogenic or yung mga makakos ng cancer probably has a negative effects on the DNA and it may lead to cancer as well. So this includes the chemicals na nakikita natin sa cigarette smoke as well as those na makikita din sa mga grilled meats. So these chemicals belong belongs to a larger class called mutagens. So meaning they can lead to changes in genetic material. Okay, so let's also include the engineering connection. So while mutations occur naturally over time, biological engineers are able to genetically modify various organisms. So humans have been genetically modifying plants and animals for almost uh, for years. So humans have accomplished this by selectively breeding or in breeding in order to produce and improve specific traits such as breeding watermelons, breeding chickens, or things that we call GMOs. So, with the advancement of technology, engineers can directly manipulate the genetic code of plants and animals. So, some examples of genetically modified organisms include the disease-resistant papaya, vitamin A-rich rice, and as well as drought-tolerant corn. And currently, researchers are studying gene editing in the womb. And if this research became successful, this would probably um, benefit the human race. So if it, if it is determined that an unborn child has a disease or disability, then we may one day be able to edit the genes of the unborn child and probably, maybe, in time, we could prevent the issue from appearing in the child. I have already introduced to you the terms and things that you need to know about mutations. So let's have an activity named Mutation Telephone Instruction. So this simply divide the class into three. Okay, so it seems that you had enjoyed your activity. So I would like you to choose your representatives to discuss what you have observed as a group. So together with this, guide questions. So I would like you to create a summary about the lesson and as well as provide um, important points from the activity you'll have. So you'll, you'll have 15 minutes Big to prepare. Group one. Okay, Leia, you can start. Okay, so let's give a round of applause for the group one. Next is the group two. Group three. Okay, thank you. Okay, so in a one half sheet of paper, kindly answer the following questions. Here, presented in screen, so this is for individual tasks. Okay, so as for your assignments, you study the next lesson.